Namaste. Well, it's late, but I have this really great idea about how to present the reality of what we're discussing in the Brahma Sutra series about when the being, the soul or whatever you want to call it, leaves the body at death, that its destiny, its destination in the next life is the state of being that one remembers at the time of death. So we could state this in another way, that the desire that one is holding at the time of death determines the state of the next body. What does that mean? The type of body, animal or human or whatever, the loka or the world in which that body lives, for example, bhu, bhuvar, swa, huh? the earth, the atmospheric regions or the heavenly regions, home of the demigods, and so forth. These three, bhur, bhuva, and svaha, are given in the Gayatri Mantra, the famous Savitri Gayatri Mantra. But there are more Vyahrutis. Bhur, Bhuva, Sva, then the Tapalok, Janalok, Maharlok, Siddhalok, ultimately Brahmaloka. And each of these Vyahrutis or Lokas, worlds, has an increasingly better quality of bodies, minds, and senses. So if one goes to these worlds, there is a much better experience of life, even if you don't attain final enlightenment. It's better that you go to one of those worlds, higher worlds, because there the facilities and the infrastructure and the knowledge is so much better quality. The whole experience of life there is of such superior quality to this planet. So then, of course, the question comes, well, how do you get there? Well, one way is to worship the deity of the loka where you want to go. For example, I worship Shiva and Shakti. I want to go to Shiva Loka or Shakti Loka or Brahma Loka, where they're physically, well, <laughs> where they're fully present and able to have relationships, huh? give and take relationships, sweet relationships with their devotees for the duration of the rest of the universe which is a long, long time, <laughs> even in those realms. So what we're saying is you have to have the concept of that world as a state of mind, as a, a desire, actually, when you leave the body. Because, says in Gita, Yam yang vapi smaran bhavam. Whatever you remember, smaran, at the time of death, the state of being, bhava, huh? that becomes the body in the next life. So the way that you remember these is by developing a desire for them. This is crucial. This is the difference between a theoretical understanding of the higher worlds and the practical yoga that allows you to enter into them. And this desire should be cultivated as early as possible in one's spiritual life. In other words, one should pick a, a destiny, a destination for the next life. Because really, spiritual life is about the next life. 
if you think it's about this life and getting what you want and stuff like that, it's, it's not. Because the mechanism of karma is that what you do in this life becomes who you are in the next life. So if one strives for all kinds of material enjoyments in this life, that simply creates desires of the quality of who? Earth. And, of course, that leads to coming back on the planet Earth as a human being and going through all that again. Is that really what you want? Uh, it's not what I want. <laughs> I want something better. You know, if we all have to die anyway, then we should make the best use, as my Adi Guru used to say, the best use of a bad bargain. We made a bad bargain by coming here. You know, this planet is a slum, isn't it? It's a ghetto. And we're all trapped here at the mercy of these rascals who are apparently in power. Why? Because God and goddess want to convince us that we should get out of here. So they don't make it a comfortable place. But if we don't take the hint huh, and drop all these desires for these earthly things, how are we going to go anyplace better? So the key to it all is developing a desire for things that are not available on planet Earth. For example, perfect love, beautiful relationships of any type, whether as a a servant, a friend, a parent, or even a conjugal lover with the deity of the planet where you want to go. And, of course, I recommend the highest deities huh? who are present on the highest planets. So that pretty much means Brahma, Vishnu, or Shiva, or any of their consorts. Saraswati, Lakshmi, or Shakti. So these are the deities that if we worship them, we develop a relationship with them. For example, if we worship them according to the rituals given in the Vedas, according to the rules and regulations and so forth, we are cultivating a relationship of servitude. Now, as my Adi Guru used to point out, tirelessly. <laughs> the servant in the palace eats from the same kitchen as the king. Isn't it? I mean, maybe he only gets the leftovers, but still. <laughs> His food is of a much higher quality than, you know, the average person in the street. So even though he's only a servant, because he's living in the palace of the king, this is a very high condition, a very high state. So in the same way, one who lives in the higher planets, even if he's the most abject slave, <laughs> is in such a better position, such a better condition than is ever possible in this world, on this earth planet and with these human bodies. Huh? Because everything here is degenerate, corrupt, contaminated with all kinds of ignorance. And as we go to higher and higher planets, there's less contamination, less ignorance, see, less misunderstanding, less stupidity, <laughs> and so on. Until when you get to the highest planets, everybody understands everything. Imagine living in a place where everyone is enlightened. I mean, if you've ever been to a really good temple, a really well-run temple, like the one where I happen to be living right now, <laughs> everybody is in spiritual mood all the time. Why? Because the conditions are created such that 
they are constantly reminded of their relationship with the Supreme. In any form, doesn't matter. In the same way, when one is in these higher lokas, higher planets, everyone you meet is in a high state of spiritual enlightenment all the time. So imagine how that experience is different from the experience of living on planet Earth, which is full of jerks <laughs> and idiots, right? <laughs> My God. <laughs> Sometimes, you know, I'll be in a public place and I'll just look around it and everybody is like, it's like being in a Gary Larson far side cartoon, you know, with all of these weird people, uh, you know, all misshapen and weird looking <laughs> because they are. They're suffering. Why? Because they're clinging to these earthly desires. Oh, let me get a bigger house. Let me get a better car, a prettier girlfriend or boyfriend, or, you know, whatever. Money, power, beauty, fame, <laughs> knowledge, all of this. But the knowledge, just for an example, huh, the knowledge available on this earth planet is like nothing compared to the higher planets. For example, the Mahabharata is about... 100,000 shlokas. It's a vast work of extremely high intelligence and wisdom. But on the heavenly planets, in the Deva Loka, huh, the Svarga, there's a version of Mahabharata with over a million shlokas. And there are sages who can recite it from memory alone. They don't need to read. Simply by hearing. See, that kind of intelligence doesn't exist on this planet. It's simply not available here, no matter what kind of body you get. So the only way to get something like that is to desire it in a desire that is bigger than this world that is higher than this world, can fulfill. To, to cling to, uh, you might call it the impossible dream, but it's only impossible in the context of earthly life. In the heavenly life, or in the, the life on Brahma Loka, everything is possible. It's possible to have any kind of relationship with God or goddess, or both. <laughs> So one should cultivate that kind of relationship in this life itself so that many, many, many impressions of that quality are stored in the mind. And then at the time of death, when the mind is compressed into the seed leading to the next life, all those impressions will be re-experienced, huh? like rewinding a tape recorder. And you will automatically remember that state of being that cannot be delivered or cannot be experienced in this earthly plane. Therefore, by default, you have to go to a higher planet in the next life to get the experience of that desire. So you see, when you read the Puranas, and there are all these stories about uh, the wonderful, beautiful, ecstatic relationships that these loving devotees have with Shiva and Shakti and Vishnu and so on and so on, you know, these are not just stories. Well, they are stories, but they're true stories. They are examples of the kind of relationship you can have with them by emulating the activities and, even more important, the attitudes of those great devotees. And that is the secret to everything, including final enlightenment, which is simply the manifestation of the desire to be one with the all. Om Tatsa.
ओम शक्ति ओम ओम नमः शिवाय